Dust Collection in a pinch. Zip tie anything to the output so that all your chips can be thrown in there. Hmm, two clamps, a fan, and a painting that needs to dry. And that's how you do that. This is Jeff from the New Janky Workshop, and here's a quick little tick on how to almost instantly cool hot glue. Say I want to glue these two pieces of cardboard together. Take my hot glue, put it down. All right, put my cardboard on. I can still move it around, still sticky, not staying. However, take these two pieces, put a nice lump on there, and put that on there. And you take one of these electronics dusters, there's usually used for keyboards, flip this sucker upside down, and spray that in there. Just watch your hands, because this is freezing CO2, and it will burn you. But that hot glue is on there, and my fingers are cold. Here's a simple hack. If you keep uh, ratchet straps to ra tighten down anything to the top of your car, what happens is you just tuck them in the door. After you start driving, they flap around and they come out. Put in one of these puppies here, which is used to tie rope off. And they're not going anywhere. All you do is just screw that right into your car. Quick little shot back here. Let's say you have an eye bolt that is in something. Might even be on your Christmas tree stand. A good way to easily turn that, you could always use a screwdriver and turn around like that. Or you can take a hook, chuck it into your drill, And then loop it through. There you go. So when I'm doing a, a palm sander or random orbital sander, I see a lot of people that it's just the more you push on it and the more you jank it around like that the worse the finish is going to be. So I just try to keep like no pressure almost on it, just guiding it back and forth in little eight inch, 10 inch sections at a time, maintaining just really smooth motions across the whole thing, nice and slow. And if there's a spot like right in the middle there that I need to buff out, rather than just being naked, I'm coming at it like this and I'm going around it to get the entire area. If I'm trying to clear up in the middle here, I'm using the edge to get at it and coming around so I don't end up creating a divot. Quick little tool tip today. If you take a look at my grinding wheels, you can see that they're very concave in the center where I've been grinding things on them. They get worn out. Let's see from the side profile here. So, what I have for you is a tool tip today. These are diamond tipped dressing plate, uh, dressing, um, plates or something like that. So this thing will help flatten this out. So let's turn this thing on and give it a shot. Got things a little dusty. However, it's almost flat. You can see as it starts to slow down. There we go. And that's how you bring a grinding wheel back from the grave. Hey folks, Jeff here from the New Jacob Workshop. And this is how you pull the bandsaw blade. Sometimes it'd be on a job and you don't have the right size screw. 
These are two and a half inch screws. I have some one and a half inch screws. One and a half is not enough to get me into the wood. Two and a half, like this one, is too far and it will poke up through the seat. And that's not something you want to do when you sit down in a chair. One thing you can do, however, if you have some nuts, what you can do, I have a nut here and a washer. You can shorten this thing up by a good quarter inch. And then drive it home. And it's not going to stick in your butt when you sit down on the seat. Here's a quick little hack that I did on my cordless Ryobi glue gun here. I took some cable ties and I cut off the ends of them and bent them around a little bit. You can see here and super glued them to the base here after scuffing it up so it has something to stick to on my cordless glue gun so that I always have two additional rounds of glue sticks ready to go for my glue gun when I need it. I need to get a cut on this piece of wood vertically and I need to go vertically through the table saw like that. Obviously going through the table saw like that is stupid. You're gonna kill yourself. A way to make a quick jig so you can make that cut is take your piece of wood here I have some super glue, CA glue, pop it on the side here, just lather it all in there. Then take something that's a lot bigger and goes through, through straight and flat like a 2x4. Not as flat as you can get a 2x4. Hit that one side with the activator, line it up straight, right with the edge, hold that in place. I'm going to do this on a flat reference surface. Now that's on there decently. You now take that temporary jig. Put it up against my fence, run it through my saw. <laughs> Snap that piece right off of there, and boom, I have my cut. So this is my square finder. So in order to figure out if this box is square from the inside, instead of trying to jam a tape measure in the corner and measure across, or I'm trying to measure the outside with these clamps in the way, this is just two little thin pieces of cherry. A little tip on the end of them. Right, so they can fit in there. And that way, if you find the middle, or you find the length from corner to corner, and then take that and drop it in this corner, if it matches, and it does, then your box is square. Well, thank you, sir. Hey folks, Jeff here at the New Jacob Workshop. Just a quick little tip for you today. A lot of us use zip ties for a whole lot of things. And a lot of times, we want to make sure that they stay there. Now, when you put them on, they stay in one direction, but they can keep moving in the forward direction. Quick little tip, if you don't want it to move, just take a little blue tape, any other kind of tape you have, wrap it around there, and then that is not gonna go anywhere. Got a hard to reach bolt that you can't hold on to. Take your wrench, dab a little hot glue on there, and put it in. And then you can get it to where you need it to be. Like right there. Not over here, but right here. If you're like me at all, you have your fair share of glues and adhesives and epoxies that you all keep together because you never know what you need, but you like to keep it all together, right? Tip for the day is take old pill bottles and use those to stand up your tubes. And that way, they're not falling over and you can easily reach in and grab them and put them back and they will stay put. Here's another quick tip for you. Sawhorses, put a nail on them. You can hang tools off them. Are you working? Or, if you want to use more than one nail, you can have holsters, but an easy way to add some storage to your mobile carts. This is something, are we recording? Yes, we are. Uh, so this is something I learned that I didn't know this. Cold chisels, these things that you get at like Home Depot for like six bucks, they're like the, the stuff. This is what they do. It's a piece of metal over here now.
They chiseled it right off. Who knew? Who knew? That's what a cold chisel's for. Now, now everybody knows. Now everybody or knows? at least the eight people that are going to watch this. I make these awesome pins and magnets on my Glowforge. However, I use CA glue, also known as super glue, to adhere the magnets onto the back. But you can see, when I do that, it gets a white residue sometimes on it. There we go. Now you can see it. To get that off, all you need to do is use a little acetone. Nail polish remover. Dab a little on. And then wipe off with a cloth. And there you go. And yes, this is what I do for fun at 3 in the morning when I can't sleep. Desiccants. They remove water from the air. You get these with food, you get these with everything. Use them in your toolboxes. Wrenches. Screwdrivers. Cutty bits. Other things. Got another one in there. Another one in there. A couple up top with some hammers. There you go. You can keep the rust out of your tools just a little bit more. Mild steel. No action at the end of the sparks. Sparks just happen, they don't blow up. High carbon steel. Little at the sparklers. end of the sparks, they make little sparklers. The grind test. So this is the way that I use to optimize sandpaper, right? I, I hate wasting money on sandpaper personally. So first, I cut it the long way. I've got a little thing set up here so it's always kind of straight. Anyway, I cut it the long way and then fold it in half like so. Open that one up, fold that one down in there just like that. Fold it in half again. Okay, take that, open that up just like we did with the first one. Boom, just like that. And now we have four, one, two, three, four, completely usable sides of sandpaper, and you can actually maximize sandpaper usage so you don't waste money on sandpaper, which I hate doing. Um, one thing I wanted to go over is a shop hack that I recently learned. Um, so why this is not um, WD-40, it's got a very similar thing. Have these little nozzles that you get with them. Spray whatever it is you're spraying. You get your nice little jet there. Good to go. But if you're like me, you lose these all the time. If you have kids, you've probably seen one of these before. Holds like 50, 25 or 50 balloons or something like that. You hook it up to your hose and it fills the balloons. When you take the balloons off, it's got a rubber band on it. So it keeps them closed. Now, that's a lot of wasted plastic. What you can do is take these, they fit in here as well. So you can easily make replacements for your WD-40 or any other silicone type spray that you have. Did you know that on your bandsaw, just like your car, the flywheels are weighted so they are properly balanced within your bandsaw?
have thin pieces of wood that you need to stand. And it's difficult to get your fingers wrapped around it. Grab a little sanding block. Use that to hold your piece to do your sanding. We gotta, we gotta figure out, we're gonna joint these edges, but we gotta figure out which way the grain, the grain goes, right? And so, I was telling Jeff, here's the analogy. It's like, you, gotta, you figure like you're petting a cat, right? So if I had to tell you what the number one mistake that we as humans make when it comes to meeting new cats, we just sort of assert our touch on top of them. One way, you, you, it, doesn't matter what you, you can rub the top, you can rub the either way. And then the, you, against the grain, cat doesn't like it with the grain. So when you're going with the grain, you know the grain is coming out of the top. When you run a jointer against this, instead of having ka -ching, ka -ching, come in in this way, chop, 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 chop. But if you came in from the other direction and were like chop, 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 every time you chop, you're basically pulling on that grain and it's gonna rip that up. Right? So you want to pet the cat. Figure out which way the cat feels nice. When the cat's happy, that's the direction you want to run. All right, so this is a trick that I learned from the essential craftsman. So we want to figure out whether or not this level is any good. So I'm going to put it on the wall here. I got the bubble right in the middle. I'm going to scribe a line on it there. Then I'm going to take it, I'm going to flip it around because I actually just want to make sure that I get... And I'm going to hold it at the top here where it's lined up and then I'm going to get it back to level on the bubble there. And then when I got it back to level on the bubble where it was, and we're there. That's the level spot and my pencil mark is not consistent. It's barely inconsistent, but you can see, top, it lines up, and as we get down to the bottom here, see how much those lines get fatter and fatter and start to diverge? This particular level is not 100% reliable. It's good, it's within, you know, a bit. So what is like, that's probably a 30 second of an inch or so over four feet, which is usually within eye range. Anyway, so that's what we check in the up and down level. All right, All right I'm out here at the table saw, and I'm gonna put this level down and I'm going to mark it so that one end of it is right at the edge of the table saw. So I'll remember where I was before. Okay, so I'm checking the level. And the table saw is not perfectly level. It is tipped a little bit that way. So the bubble is a little closer to the line on this side. And reasonably centered on that one. This one has two levels to kind of give you better accuracy, apparently. So I'm going to now flip this thing over and end for end, put it in the same spot, and check level again. So this bubble is, again, just a little touching on one side, but this bubble's in the center. So we know that this one is the better, more accurate. Huh? Anyway, the essential craftsman, I learned it from that. So he's done it better than I have. Go watch his channel. Small basement shop. Utilize all the space that you can in their shop. Even the pipes that are in the ceiling. Just put some hooks on it and hang things off of it. Have a small basement workshop? Utilize all the space that you can. Another thing you can do is put a small shelf or two between some studs and you can put things like your tape there or other things that you want to hang off there. Have a small basement workshop? Utilize all the space that you can. If you have an oil tank in your small basement shop, it is metallic, so you can use it with magnetic holders to put all your tools into. Hang your hammers, saws, screwdrivers, and more right on your oil tank. You can also utilize the space on top as well. Have a small basement workshop? Utilize all the space that you can. This is a great way to organize your spring clamps. You see those are right inside of the door there. And all that is is just this. Cardboard shipping box supports. Screwed into the wall and then you can clamp your spring clamps on them. Have a small basement workshop? Utilize all the space that you can. Concrete wall, not a problem. You can add some studs to the wall, use some joist connectors, joist hangers, to actually anchor them in to the joist in the ceiling, and then you can either use some adhesive to adhere them to the wall, or use some tapcon screws and screw them right into the concrete so that you can add shelving and anything more that you need to on a concrete wall.